All right, well, I have a minute after. We'll go ahead and get started. Well, first off, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and this is our second webinar that we're hosting um, in our student athlete development series that we're doing here for the 2020-21 academic year. Um, tonight, we'll be featuring uh, Julie Vett, who is our coordinator of volleyball officials for the first edition of our Staying in the Game. Julie has been assigning with the WIAC since 2001. So she's been around our league and with us for a very long time. Um, she's also the president of the Pavo Association and she'll get into details about that a little later. Um, she's also certified as an international official and has officiated in several um, NCAA Final Four uh, championship games at the division one, two, and three level. Also tonight, we have Rebecca Glasper. She's joining us as well. She's a former student athlete um, from UW River Falls, and she's also a, currently an official right now. And then we have Robin, and Robin, I don't want to butcher your last name, <laughs> but um, she is joining us. Um, she was a former student athlete at St. Benedictine. So, um, they're going to be with us tonight and giving us all the information um, that you all need to continue to stay in the game and stay active after your uh, playing career. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over right now to Julie. Julie? Danielle, thank you very much. Um, I'm really pleased to be with all the uh, athletes this evening and uh, talk to you about becoming uh, an official. And uh, Robin and Rebecca, as Danielle mentioned, are current uh, volleyball referees. And I want to uh, spend a little time after I go through the information, uh, asking them some questions and let you guys ask some questions as well on what you'd like to know about uh, becoming a referee. And so a little bit about what the Stay in the Game initiative is. Um, as, as you can imagine, um, there are uh, a, a huge increase in sports and the need for officials has grown over time. And um, we aren't attracting as many people into officiating to reach the demand as the amount of uh, sports has grown, youth sports in particular. And so the WIAC made it an initiative to be part of the solution of developing officials and developing younger uh, officials. Um, some of the surveys that have um, been done uh, by like the National Association of Sports Officials, NASO, uh, is that across many sports officials are in, the average age of the officials in those sports are in their 50s and that means we need to start recruiting younger people to take the place of uh, the officials as they retire and what a what a great place to go for the athletes that already know the game they don't need to be trained on what the game is but just need to understand what it is to be an official so the wic created this stay in the game program and this is the first time for me doing uh, the webinar uh, last year some of you might have had an opportunity to participate where uh, officials came and spoke to your teams. We got that started, but we did not finish due to the um, pandemic. So uh, Robin was one of the people that who participated in that uh, and went to talk to athletes. But through the webinar this year, um, uh, we're going to be able to reach a lot more athletes because this will be out there recorded. So what I'd like to do is give you a little bit of nuts and bolts information. And I'm going to uh, do a screen share here so that you can see it before we get into the questions and answers. So hold on just a moment while I share my screen. Okay, are you guys able to uh, see a PowerPoint up there? All right, so um, this first page here just tells us what we're in today and um, staying in the game, you know, what, what are some reasons that you might want to become a sports official? Some of you might be involved in sports other than a volleyball. Robin, for example, was a basketball referee, so she can uh, certainly answer questions about that. And as I 
And as I mentioned before, um, we'll be talking with Robin and Becca a little bit later on. So what are some reasons why, why you might wanna become a sports official? Um, there's a lot of different reasons that people have. Um, one of the top things on the list, particularly for um, people that are still in college or maybe right out of, out of college, and Becca can probably talk about this, is extra money that you can earn and a lot of flexibility with your schedule. Um, it's an opportunity for those that love sports to stay with the game, uh, creates life skills, provides opportunities, and just a lot of reasons why you might want to uh, stay as a sports official. How would you potentially become an official? There's a, a couple of different ways for you to get started. Probably one of the most common ways to, to get started is through youth volleyball. And one way to do that is through your local USAV um, region. Many of you probably played club volleyball um, when you were uh, growing up or were at least aware of it, and you probably belong to a region. I put down the websites here for the regions where I'm sure many of you are from. I know it's not gonna cover all of the athletes because our athletes come from a number of states, but um, probably the two most common are uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. And if you go to the websites um, that are listed here, you can look under uh, information about becoming a referee might be listed as becoming an official. And they, there'll be contact information for the referee chair or somebody in the region office that you can um, contact. Typically, to um, be able to become a volleyball referee, uh, there's some requirements that the regions um, have. Um, normally, you need to become a member. So there's a small fee to join the region. And oftentimes, regions will have a reduced price um, for uh, collegiate level um, uh, individuals to get started. But that's not always the case. You have to check with the region. Uh, normally, you need to do a clinic. Uh, in a lot of years, that'll be in person. This year, I expect there's going to be a lot of virtual options as well. Um, and then uh, taking a test. And there might be some observation requirements, as well as an investment in some equipment to have the right um, uniform that's required. So there's a little bit of upfront investment. Um, and you can get all the specifics for that when you uh, contact uh, the region. Another option that might be out there um, is if you're interested in becoming a high school official. Um, if you go to the National Federation um, website, the very first one that I have listed there, highschoolofficials.com, uh, I went out there to see how that worked and you just put in your name, your email address and what state you're in and you can get information on any sport, not just volleyball. Um, that's one place to, uh, to get information. And then I also listed the websites for each of the states um, here where most of the athletes are from uh, Minnesota or Wisconsin. You can get information about the high school and what's required there. They have very similar requirements to um, what a USAV region has, but they're a little bit different. They will uh, require you to register with the organization. So there's a, a fee to join. Uh, you'll need to uh, attend a clinic. Um, those could be in person or online. I can tell you from Wisconsin, they've gone to online over uh, the last few years. Um, and perhaps Robin can tell us a little bit more about Minnesota if anyone has a question there. And then you'll um, also have to take a test and there may be some opportunities for some on-court training or observation uh, within the state. A lot of officials will join a officials organization that will provide training and assistance, particularly for new officials. And then lastly, I uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, PAVO. As Danielle mentioned, I'm uh, currently serving as the president of PAVO. Uh, that is the Professional Association of Volleyball Officials. I listed the uh, website there. And PAVO focuses on training and certifying officials. Uh, our focus is officials at the collegiate level, but we do provide um, training and opportunities for, for all levels. Um, 
instead of regions, PAVO has um, boards. And rather than joining PAVO directly, you would join a board. So in the case of Minnesota, it's uh, Metro um, is the uh, volleyball board. And uh, Wisconsin, it's the Wisconsin Board of Officials. So if you go to the PAVO website, you can uh, select the state that you're in and it will give you a list of the board and a contact person that you can contact uh, to be able to uh, get information about joining. So that is uh, just kind of a high level overview of uh, information on becoming an official. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, before I bring on our guests about any of these resources that you want to ask um, ahead of time? Okay, I'm going to uh, bring on our guests now. I'm pretty excited um, that uh, I have uh, both of these um, individuals to uh, be here tonight. I'm going to start with uh, just giving you a little bit of information about Robin. Um, Robin's been um, officiating um, for a while and um, Robin is actually a um, uh, two sport athlete at the collegiate level. She uh, is a graduate of St. Benedict. Um, she began uh, officiating both volleyball and basketball for about 15 years. She's since retired from basketball, um, has continued with volleyball, and she can maybe tell you a little bit more about uh, her decision there. Um, but she doesn't just officiate, she also uh, has some other full-time responsibilities. Um, she's a Microsoft um, consultant. She also does uh, training of volleyball officials. She assigns officials and uh, she's uh, located in the Minneapolis area, does a lot of the training in that area. She's also a national referee uh, for both USA Volleyball and uh, for uh, ABO. Uh, she has a significant experience at the NCAA level. She's worked the national championships at the division two and the division three level. Um, and she also has uh, worked in the division one NCAA um, tournament. But if that isn't enough, um, Robin's also a mom. She has two boys, uh, teenagers at that. And uh, 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 she manages their uh, sports careers because <laughs> they're also involved in sports and extracurricular activities. So Robin will be able to tell us a little bit about what it's like to be uh, a full-time uh, uh, person uh, working a job, a volleyball official, and, uh, and a mom. If they tell and, you uh, go ahead, Robin. If they tell you you can't do everything and have it all, they're wrong. You can do <laughs> There you go. <laughs> There you go. Well, we'll look to hear more about that from Robin. And then I'd like to um, introduce um, Becca. Um, Becca is um, also a, a referee and uh, Becca started playing uh, volleyball when she was um, in fifth grade. She uh, played high school uh, volleyball. She played club volleyball for uh, Southwest Volleyball Club. She also was a four year volleyball athlete at UW River, River Falls. And then uh, after she graduated, uh, Becca uh, went on to uh, a master's program at Kansas State where she um, played on the club team, so continued to play volleyball, and now she is playing adult tournaments in the Milwaukee area. Uh, so uh, uh, Becca started officiating um, with some, I'll say, casual leagues, um, and uh, she uh, uh, decided that she wanted to become more serious. And so she joined Badger Region last year. And she's been involved with the Badger Region Youth Volleyball League. Uh, she started that last year. She's also done um, some coaching in that league. And she had uh, great intentions to uh, officiate club volleyball throughout the spring and earn extra money on the weekends. And then all of a sudden we uh, hit the pandemic. And so those dreams have been put on hold for a little while until she has a chance to uh, get back out there. Um, but uh, uh, she uh, has started her officiating uh, career. 
Um, as far as education, um, she has a Bachelor of Science in Exercise Sports Science with a minor in Business Administration. Those were uh, her studies at uh, UW River Falls. Uh, and then she went on to a Master of Public Health from uh, Kansas State University. And I did mention to uh, Becca that I would love to spend some time uh, talking to her about her views um, on pandemic with her degree in public health. We haven't had time to do that yet because I just learned about that um, over the weekend when we were officiating together. But uh, she, uh, she definitely got the uh, right degree to have some insight into what we're all experiencing and going through right now. Um, and right now, um, Becca is working full time. She's um, with the Medical College of Wisconsin. She's the education program uh, coordinator. Um, and uh, she works with a, a master's degree program that, that uh, is a two year grant program. Uh, and she uh, works with um, people that are looking to become physicians for their career um, in clinical research. So I want to welcome uh, Robin and Becca to the call. And before I start, I have a few questions for them and certainly you guys can join in as well. But before that, um, Robin, Becca, I'm just gonna open the floor for you guys to you know, introduce yourselves, anything that you wanna say that I might've left out. Um, feel free to um, let our athletes know and then uh, we'll kind of get into some questions. Uh, so Robin, I'll... Uh, uh, hand it over to you first. Oh, well, good. Well, thank you. Um, I don't, I don't normally like talking about myself, so I'm going to kind of deflect on a few questions when I get it, but, but I think that's an okay thing for an official to be. It's like, cause it's not about you, right? It's about, it's about the athletes and giving them a good experience. And so I really love the fact that Julie and uh, Danielle had us here because um, I love seeing these faces, right? And seeing young faces, because like they said before, the cadre, even when I was playing, I'm sorry, it was old, it was old. Um, they were old <laughs> and, and there wasn't anyone like me. Um, there were very few female officials whatsoever. Um, and so seeing someone um, that makes sense or that, hey, I could do that. We really didn't have that too much when I was playing. Um, and, and to be honest, it's always the thing where you're supposed to find your replacement. So it's always good to be recruiting all the time. Um, I'm happy to say, and maybe you'll see this, these are my two boys. They are 17 and 14. And my 17 year old is out doing Edina Park and Rec ball tonight. So he is officiating. Um, so I found my replacement, but I had to actually He's my son, so, and I'm not having any more kids. So you guys are gonna be great uh, recruits here because that takes the pressure off of me. Um, and I love the fact, again, to see all these faces here and just give you guys a, a way to stay in the game when you're done playing. And that was what was important to me when I first started out there too. So Becca, over to you. Um, yeah, I echo a lot of what Robin said in that regard. Um, for me, it's it, it's a transition, honestly, because you go from competing and like you're like this is my life and it's so much focus to like as you kind of phase out, you're like, okay, now who am I? What do I do? So, like for me in my experience, by staying in the game, like when I moved from River Falls to Kansas, I moved to Kansas not knowing anybody, but I met people by playing volleyball, by playing on that club team. And that's how I like met one of my best, well, a couple of my best friends actually I met by staying in the game that way. And then I played in murals, made even more friends. Moving back to Milwaukee by staying around the game and met a lot of people by playing volleyball. And now through officiating, like it's, I'm still relatively new to officiating, but even from this fall league the past like two months, I feel like I've made so many different connections. So for me, just staying in the game, like it's, it's become a part of my identity, which is kind of also why I'm getting more into officiating now. And also I just feel like, I, you know, I can give something back, right? Because kind of like Robin was saying, like to all the girls, you know, coming up now in the sport, like they can also like look up to us and see, okay, like there's someone like me, like he wants my playing time is then we can do that. So for me, I guess part of the reason I officiate too and stay in the game is just giving back to the sport that gave me so much. That's kind of my thoughts, initial thoughts. Great. Robin and Becca, great starting. Um, really appreciate um, your sharing your thoughts and your um, motivations for being in officiating. 
So one of my first questions is, um, if you played sports other than volleyball, um, what sports did you play? And uh, tell us a little bit about your experience there. And maybe I'll start with you on that one, Robin. So I, um, as, as uh, Julie mentioned before, and sorry, I have visuals because I got pictures everywhere. So this <laughs> is me, my first year doing basketball officiating with my um, cohort from St. Ben's, um, Heidi. So the reason why, really the reason why I started is because I had a buddy. Um, Heidi and I went in and started officiating kid ball um, while we were in college and we loved it. And it was nice because we were together. And when we started doing boys games together, that was just a coup because two females on little kid 12 year old ball was like, what <laughs> do they really, do they know what they're doing? And we had just finished four years of college ball. So yeah, we kind of knew what we were doing. Um, and we hustled up and down the court they were used to these people that maybe got to half court, if, if that, and really um, were like, wow, hey, these two actually kind of know what they're doing, you know? <laughs> so, so it was a lot of fun, but I had a buddy. And like Becca said, I met new people then through that. We didn't always work together, Heidi and I, but when we did, we had such a good time, right? And so we had a support mechanism. We could you know, talk to each other, work through some of the situations that we would have had um, going on. We could say, hey, why did this guy yell at us? Because we were actually right. Um, and it really kind of helped to have somebody to bounce something off. And it had to help, it helped to have somebody that you could relate to and that had your same experience. Um, not to say that you can't do it by yourself, because you can, um, but it did make it easier. And it made it easier to stick with it, because your, your buddy was going to be there, right? So your friend was going to be there and relying on you to, to, to be at that game too. So if you can, recruit a friend, right? So <laughs> safety in numbers, that's, a, that's what I always say. So. Great. Becca, did you have any sports other than volleyball or was volleyball your focus? Uh, no, I was a three-sport athlete all the way through high school. So I did bas. So winter was all super busy because I was doing basketball and club volleyball season at the same time. So it would be like, you know, school practice three to five and volleyball, like, you know, six to eight, like it was, it was a long time, but yeah, no, I said, I played basketball and then I did track as well through high school. I ran hurdles. So I was, I've kind of always been busy and somewhere involved in sports one way or another. Great. Great. So when you guys were competing, what did you think about officials? You know, when you look back at your career um, as a, a volleyball athlete or other athlete, um, what did you think about officials? And did that have any kind of influence in um, deciding whether to become an official? Um, Becca, do you want to take that one first? Sure. Um, so when I was playing, it's I, I kind of gave the officials some thoughts. There were some who you would see repeatedly who you kind of know, like, oh, you know, like for volleyball, like, oh, that one calls a lot of doubles or like, oh, basketball, like, oh, you know, like that one calls a lot of fouls or there are some you just kind of like could sense. But otherwise, I mean, I didn't pay, I feel like I didn't pay a ton of attention to them. I was a lot more focused on like the game, except for, you know, you know there are some games like there's always going to be those calls you disagree with and like that, those situations always kind of happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just kind of remember them being there. And then as they kind of mentioned right with like how the ref, like officials are kind of like aging, I kind of remember that it being a common trend as well when I was playing. But I mean, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. It, not, not a ton of thoughts on them really. How about you, Robin? Do you, uh, what, what, did, what were your thoughts of uh, officials when you were competing? I, I had a mixed bag. Um, I, I was a little, competitive, really, really competitive. Um, and so, and I, and I thought I did know pretty much all the rules, right? And I knew what, what the call should have been. Um, and more so, I think on the basketball side than the volleyball side, it was a little more subjective. Um, of course, I was, a, I, I was an outside hitter for volleyball. And anytime I would put my hands above my head, before the ball even came to my hands, I would get called for a double. No lie. 
Um, back then it wasn't as nice <laughs> to, there were no doubles at all. And you touched the ball with two hands and it was a double. Um, so it, basically we learned to kind of get around it. Um, I didn't really, uh, I, I didn't really think that our officials did a poor job at all. I thought we had a really good crew here in Minnesota. Um, and even when we traveled and, and um, did the WIAC and, and went over there for non-conference games, I, I thought, you know, overall, everyone did a good job. And I, and I respected the fact that they were there to help us have a game, right? Did we agree with every call? No. <laughs> did, did, we, um, did we think and have, have our um, discussions? Sure. There were a couple times when I was uh, later on in, in my ending of my career, I was only carded once. And I was carded once in volleyball uh, for, again, doubles. Um, and it was by the, mo the sweetest um, <laughs> female ref who's just a legend here in Minnesota. And later on when I became an official and I got to work with her, I said, hey, Maria, do you remember you carded me when I was at St. Ben's? Do you remember that? She said, yes, you would not shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, you're right. <laughs> and, and I deserved it. And, and being on that side and seeing it flipped around, you kind of understand where they're coming from too. Everyone has a level. Um, and once you reach that level and push a little farther, then you just need to be told, okay, that's enough. Great, great uh, story there, Robin, um, and gives us a little insight into your competitiveness um, as a as a player. So let's um, uh, shift over to what uh, what kind of got you into officiating. Uh, what uh, what did you have a mentor? Did um, did a buddy get you in, or were there a number of things? Um, Becca, how did you get started in officiating? Yeah, it. I, I was trying to remember like the exact way it was part of it's been my dad's been encouraging me to do it for years because he's like it's a really good way to make extra money like especially when you're in college and like even now um so he's been encouraging me and then like I said I think I had maybe wrecked a few other like casual leagues or volunteered a few tournaments like in college but I really started getting into it like when I was back in Milwaukee and it was that fall league that Badger region does where I was coaching and then I think at some point I just kind of reached out to the Badger region, like, hey, I'm kind of interested in this. And then when I reached out, they were very responsive and receptive. Um, and then, and so since then, so I like, I did the training and then we went through, they had like the little onboarding. So it was me and some other new officials kind of went through that together. Um, and since then, like everyone I've met in the region has just been so great. Like Sarah, who does all like a lot of our training, assigning and stuff for Badger, like she's just, super energetic, super responsive, like it's always encouraging. She's like, oh, looks like you're gonna ref club and like kind of wants to keep you involved and like just like even like as a new fish, you're not always kind of like sure, like a lot of it's kind of like getting that confidence to officiate or make those calls. But just being around like these people and I know Badger Region as well recently started, I think a mentoring program. Julie, I think you might maybe know about that as well. If we're like, they kind of pair like senior officials with newer officials. so. We tried that last year and then like she mentioned things our season kind of got interrupted um but so at least from my experience with badger region like it's once you express interest like they really welcome you in and like everyone i've met you know can ask questions to average has been super helpful as well well um becca so one of the things i think on some people's minds but there are might be afraid to ask is let's let's talk the financials a little bit. Can you talk to this group, what kind of part-time um, money they could make? You know, what, what does that look like if, if they officiate at a tournament? And uh, just talk to us a little bit about the, the pay and what you've experienced as a new official. Yeah, um, so dollar amounts, I think, I think they're typically set by the region or no, it's set by your rank. So for this fall league I did, it was set at $25 a match, um, which is a pretty good rate for, you know, the, considering the match is four or five minutes to an hour. So like, that's a really good rate. And then for officiating at other levels, I know what goes up as you go up in like the officials ranking. So I'm looking at moving up to provisional, I think sometime in the next year. And then shoot that'll go up to like $30 a match. And then the further you go up, I know it goes up more and more. So if you figure for a lot of like club turns, this may be like eight, 
eight to 10 matches a day, kind of depending on the tournament. So, you know, you have 30, you get $30, eight matches. That's what, $240? If I do that right. So, like, that's pretty good. And if you do that, even like, you know, one day on the weekend, do that four weekends a month or however you want to break it up, like, that's a, you know, he easily become one, $2,000 extra, which is really helpful. I mean, while you're in college, as well as like, depending what kind of job you get when you start out, like having that little bit of extra, like, okay, if that covers rent, then you can maybe put more into savings or just pay off a loan. You know, that could be your loan payment, depending how your finances are. So, but it's good money. And like the hourly rate is equivalent to a lot of like starting jobs, I would say. So um, Becca, that, that sounds like um, pretty good money um, e enough to even keep some of the older officials uh, in it. Um, uh, how has the flexibility been as far as scheduling um, you when when you're available and um, you know talk to uh, talk to us about um, flexibility working around you know your schedule and being able to officiate? Yeah, I think honestly the flexibility is one of my favorite parts of it because as Julie kind of mentioned in my intro, like I had done some coaching before and it I just found for like the way I was doing my schedule, it was just taking up too much time. So when it comes to refing, you you can kind of pick when you work, which is really nice. So at least for Badger, we go through a system and you can go ahead and you can block out like, okay, if I'm gone this weekend or I just don't want to work this weekend, you can like block it off. Or if you say, I always want, you know, my Saturdays off to do something else, you can block it off. So it's kind of, you can work as much or as little as you want, which is the part I like. And then if, I mean, you really should still avoid canceling last minute. Like I don't, you know, definitely communicate with your assigner in that regard, but it's just so flexible. And you can look ahead, like if your work schedule, if you know you have a busy week, just be like, okay, I'm not gonna ref that weekend. And you can kind of dictate when you work, which is really kind of like one of my best favorite things about it, honestly. Sounds like an ideal part-time job. Would you, uh, would you agree it's working out pretty well? Yeah, you pick when you work and you get paid pretty well compared to a lot of other part-time jobs, so. Yeah, great. Thank, thanks for that, um, Becca. Um, Robin, how did you get into um, officiating? Maybe you can talk to us a little bit more about um, the volleyball side of things. Um, did your buddy, um, Heidi, get you into volleyball too? Yeah, uh, she did volleyball as well. And now, well, coming full circle, it's 20 years later, right? So she and I... Um, are the metro area assigners for volleyball. Um, Heidi has her own um, assigning company and she does uh, lower level ball. So middle school, um, ninth grade, B squad and metro volleyball, which is my company um, with my mentor who got me into volleyball. Um, she and I um, are assigning high school, which for some reason decided to come back from spring to fall here and we had a two week job to get everybody assigned to high school matches, um, which is interesting. So I, I'm sleeping with my eyes open right now um, from these last couple of weeks. But so she and I have come, um, come now and, and now we do the assigning side. So I, I echo what Becca said, the schedule, you can make your own schedule. You tell, you put your availability into Arbiter Sports and you say, yeah, I'd like to work on this day or I'd like to work this day and the other day. Um, and I'd like to just travel within 30 miles of my house. And chances are we can, at least in populous areas like the, the Twin Cities here, we can get you working as many nights a week as you want right now. Um, and, and the pay is uh, better than any other part-time job that you could find, right? So it's, um, it's nice, you can make your schedule and do that. And so, like I said, my mentor, um, who I'm now business partners with in this assigning venture, um, she got me into it by doing park and rec ball. So I started just where my son is today. Um, so she, I started with park and rec ball um, and then would, would do an okay job. So then I started doing North Country Region, um, started doing the qualifier events. Um, got into the high school ball, worked with some great people. Um, the assigners know if you're new, right? So they know to put you with people um, that, can, that can help you along, along the way, right? And can teach you the protocol, can, can tell you how to flip a coin. Believe it or not, there's a way to flip a coin. Um, so so there's, there's those little things, right? And, and teach you to play the part because 
you can you only get one chance to make that first impression walking in. So if your shirt is crisp, if your pants are uh, are nice and and not wrinkly, if you're you're wearing the right color shoes, all of those things you think aren't noticed, but they're noticed. And so if if even if you look the part, um, your your credibility is a step up. And, but for sure, if you don't look the part or you are missing, you're out of uniform or something, someone's going to notice and the coaches are going to notice that little piece and just automatically think, okay, well, we'll give this guy a chance, but, you know, do they really know what they're doing? So I would always make sure I, my protocol was set, you know, even though that's not all the game, but if you can do a, a good captain's meeting, if you can talk with coaches, if you can communicate, um, that, that goes a long way. And so you gotta, you gotta learn those little fine, finer tuning things. And then, yep. Calling, calling uh, down balls and in and out and touches that seems easy compared to that. Great. Thank, thank you, Robin. Um, got a few more questions. Um, but before I go there, I just want to, uh, check, does anybody have a question that you'd like to chime in with before I go on? Anything that you guys want a little more information on? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll, I've got I've got more questions, so I'm I'm ready to go on. Uh, um, You're asking good ones, Julie. <laughs> uh, so there's a little bit of an. We talked a little bit about an investment in officiating. You have to make an investment. There's some equipment. There's a uniform. There's some things like going to clinics, taking a test. Um, and Rebecca, you just recently started with um, uh, club volleyball. So maybe you can talk a little bit, what's been your experience as far as investment in your time, the training and, and you know, what, what did you have to buy ahead of time for uh, uniform? Uh, can, you, can you share some of that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, some of the things is, kind of standard like the uniform like you'll need you know the navy pants the shirt um white tennis shoes if you don't already have them I got separate ones you know like you get like the nice insoles and I'm still be standing a lot and like just kind of keep them as your indoor shoes um the belt you'll have to buy the whistle which isn't super expensive um in terms of like other stuff like the cards the chain um the little flags they have they sell starter kits on Amazon and they're like 30 ish dollars 30 to 50 it kind of depends where exactly you get them from you can go from Amazon or I think there's also a, a volleyball officials website that sells that gear specifically so you can also get stuff from there and they um, also have officiating shirts if you're just starting or aren't sure you just kind of want to like test the waters you could just get like a basic white polo from somewhere or like whatever color your uniform like region is and then you could always commit to those other shirts, like, you know, if you decide you're going to stay in it. Um, so upfront costs, I mean, probably less than $100 to invest. And when you think about it, if you're making like 25, 30 a match, that's like four matches. So a lot of it kind of balances. Um, in terms of trainings, I think it's a couple hours Like you'll have to do, you know, safe sport and some general things for your membership. And for refereeing, like there was some extra online trainings we had to do. We had, um, in my case, we had an in-person meeting still and kind of went over the basics of what to expect. So it'll be another couple hours of your time really going through that. The benefit for us coming in as like for my athletes who played is we already are familiar with the game and like the basic rules and the game flow and all that stuff. So it, that saves a lot of time because you don't have to relearn the sport. You kind of already know that. Um, and then there's, you know, the annual region fees, USAV, USAV membership fees. Um, Julie, I'm not sure if you know, I think some of that might be eligible for reimbursement also. Um, but overall, it's maybe a couple hundred dollars, couple hours of your time and like your return on that, if you like rep a lot, like it, it far outweighs the cost. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Becca. And um, Becca did mention sometimes regions will have um, some kind of um, promotion for new officials where they will help reimburse some of those costs or a lower fee to get started. Um, and so that's something you, you could check into as well. Um, Robin, anything you want to add about investing, you know, um, in a, equipment or time or anything like that that you'd like to add to, to that? Yeah, that's really been something that's kind of been a, 
an initiative of mine, at least, uh, especially in trying to recruit new officials, because if you think about it, all of those fees and all of the shirts that you have to buy and then all the whistles and the equipment and stuff. And, and it's like, it's a, is it any wonder why people don't want to, you know, start officiating or is there a way that we can help that out you know because in in some cases yes you you need to be a registered member of something because they do the background check they take care of your um, general liability insurance which is important it might not sound like it's important but it's important um, to have that as and it, and it to have your back um, so you want to make sure that you have all of that in place and so some fees are going to be inevitable but extra fees and anything that we can do to kind of alleviate some of those initial costs we want to be able to do. And so our, our um, college NCAA or PAVO board here um, does have a scholarship fund. It's named after our original um, assigner, Jose Jones, um, that uh, Julie I know knows. Um, and, and so we named this after, um, after our assigner, for who he did the assigning for the MIAC, the UMAC, um, the NSIC for years. And after he passed away, we wanted to have a way to remember him. And so he was always one for training and he was always one for um, development of officials. And so we do offer uh, a scholarship for any of those types of things. If you're a first year member of the NCAA board, um, you can apply to a scholarship and we'll pay for your PAVO or we'll reimburse you for that membership. Um, if you're going to a, a camp or a clinic to try to get better along the way, again, apply for it. We've got scholarship money we, and we'll help you out. Um, same thing with my, uh, our company here. It's like I, a lot of times when, in order to get games for certain areas, you have to pay a fee in order to get games. And I never liked that. So Metro Volleyball, we don't take fees from our officials. We want the money to stay in your pockets because you guys earned it. You guys are, we don't want you to have to work five matches in order to break even. Um, and so in some of our junior events, we're, we're trying to get it so that you can work and it's 30, sometimes $40 a match uh, for some of these big tournament weekends. And you can walk away with 500, some hundred dollars. So it's, it's crazy the amount of money that's out there. Um, and it's every level of ball. You can start at 12 year olds, you, or you can work your way up and you can do 18 opens, right? So it'll, it'll get there. We're going to start you out on 12 year olds, right? And <laughs> we're going to work your way up. Um, but, but the pay is, is nice for, for that kind of thing. And we can mentor you along the way. And so I really think that it's, uh, uh, there are opportunities out there. Sometimes you have to seek them out. You wouldn't know that there might be scholarship money available from your region unless you seek it out. Um, you might not know that there are other opportunities out there um, un unless you kind of get hooked up with the right people and they can help you along the way. But we are huge on wanting new officials and younger officials, especially players of the game, um, to, to get into this um, career just because you played it. You know the game. You know the rules already. You just might not know the signals and the proper way to do that. But guess what? We can teach you that. You already know half the battle. You know rotations. Uh, I can't tell you how many people don't know anything about rotations and overlapping. You guys know it because you're on the floor the whole time. You you can direct traffic, um, you know, from your seat back in the in the stands. So you guys already have that leg up on almost every single official that's out here that hasn't already played the game, and so the rest of the stuff can be taught. Um, but that innate nature of knowing the patterns and knowing the um, places and positions on the court, you guys got that down already. So that's a leg up already. Great. Thanks, Robin. Um, so those of you that are in the, um, you know, Minnesota, Minneapolis area, this is the name you want to know, Robin Prashane. She's yep. She can get you uh, started uh, in officiating uh, there. Even if you uh, live here and then go to school there. Just come on the break. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll Robin will, Robin will find some opportunities for you. <laughs> so, um, Robin, what do you see as, um, you know, some of the barriers to getting that, that people say why they can't officiate or that you see that, um, you know, prevent uh, people getting involved in officiating? What kind of barriers are out there? Or what kind of barriers have, have you seen in your own career with, uh, with officiating? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest is career. Um, is your job going to be flexible enough um, to allow you to leave and get to a high school match that 
starts at 5.30 or earlier. So you gotta be there at five um, on site. So that means you gotta travel there. Can you leave your job at four o'clock? Um, in these times, everybody's home office is their home. So technically you could probably figure out how to get there on time, um, but, but that not, might not always be the case in some careers. And so career flexibility is huge. Um, location is also huge. Um, if you live out, uh, if you live in a populous area like the Twin Cities, I've, we've got matches six days out of seven. Um, so thankfully Sunday can be our day of rest, but every day uh, otherwise, if you wanted to work, we could, we could find a match for you. Um, and that's almost all year round because juniors does take um, every weekend for sure, not much during the week except then boys starts up in the spring. So, so we do have opportunities um, all year round for, for volleyball. And, and I think the, the biggest reason why people start and then might stop um, is how they're treated, um, other than job, how they're treated while they're officiating. Um, that's, that's never fun to get yelled at. Um, never fun to get booed by a big crowd, you know, that's, it's okay, but you got to have a tough, tough, thick skin. Um, and then I think in basketball, it was a little bit more um, contentious, just because I thought maybe the crowd thought they knew the, that game a little bit more. A volleyball crowd is a little more educated, just saying, or the people don't know what they're talking about. So then they don't say anything, which is nicer too. Um, but all of that kind of falls into, it's like, do I really want to spend my time and get yelled at? And how much of that can you take? Um, and so again, you really do have to have a thick skin. After a while, earplugs. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't already wear earplugs when you're blowing a whistle, get earplugs because I didn't wear them for about 10 years. My hearing went away. Now that was good because the crowd would yell and I can't hear them. So I don't really care, um, but do protect your hearing and invest in a nice pair of earplugs if you're going to blow your whistle uh, a lot, especially at those junior tournaments. Um, and then kids, family. Um, a lot of times our young, especially our young female officials, they'll get started, they'll survive you know, the first couple years of maybe you know getting yelled at a little bit and feeling like they don't know anything and they'll get over that and then they'll get better. But then they might get married, they might have a kid and they might not find then either the support um, from, the, the, um, from their husbands to stay home with the kid by themselves. Um, I was lucky, uh, my husband loves <laughs> being home with the kids um, and always has. So my farthest time out of officiating was three months. Um, and so it was uh, for each kid. And so I didn't have to, I didn't have to choose, but you also, you have to have that conversation, right? So you have to say, Hey, this is important to me to, to keep doing this and give back to the sport. Um, and I want to continue doing it. And then you have to be okay with it. You have to be okay with not being at home, um, for a few hours at night, uh, with your kid and not tucking them into bed and, and be okay with it. Um, and so once, once that happens and you make those choices and then you can focus on career, get a little bit more flexibility, then, then it, it does become a little bit easier down the road. Great. Thanks, Robin. Becca, have you uh, experienced any challenges or barriers yet um, with officiating and scheduling, uh, getting into it? Uh, anything uh, yet for you? Um, nothing too bad because I am still newer, I guess. More my my barrier, which kind of took me longer to get into it, was just kind of the fear of being yelled at in my case. So as Robin mentioned, like officiating is not an easy job, you know, and it's different now because like we might not have the crowds there, but at some point, you know, I'm sure the crowds will be back. Like there's still the coaches, there's still the players. So for me, it was more that fear. So it, like she said, it takes a tough skin once you're in there. It also takes a little bit of that calm just to get to that point where you are in and you're fishing, you're like, yes, I'm going to make that call. Yes, that was a double. Yes, this ball was out and I saw it out, you know, and like sticking with that. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, one bear that like delayed my entry a little bit in a way. And then other than that, I haven't experienced as many, because, you know, as we've mentioned, I'm still kind of newer to fishing. But I think, as Robin said, too, with your personal life, like as you go through, it's just 
different barriers come up as you transition through different phases of your life, so. Let's talk a little bit about this fear of getting yelled at. And Robin, I'm going to go to you on this one. Um, you've been officiating a few more years than Becca has. And as much as I've worked with Robin, she's a great official. Robin makes great calls. But I suspect maybe over your career, there might have been a call that you wish you had back or you know might have been wrong. And maybe when you were, were I'm just presuming this, uh, that uh, maybe you got yelled at. Um, talk to us about um, what happens when a mistake is made or, or an error. How do you how do you handle that? And uh, is there uh, any kind of uh, you know getting used to it or learning how to deal with those situations that you can share with our folks here? Because clearly, getting getting yelled at is is a fear that uh, has been voiced by both of you, and the surveys show that uh, that that that's something where officials leave the business. Um, because they don't like getting yelled at by the parents oftentimes, but it's, it's also right now we don't have spectators um, in the gym and, and sometimes the coaches are yelling at you or in, in your case, Robbie, even a player sometimes as well. So uh, talk to us about, uh, about that a little bit if you could. Yeah, well, I think everybody has an innate nature, right? They, they, we wanna be liked. Right? We, we don't want people to yell at us. We don't want to give them a reason to yell at, yell, yell at us. We want them to see that we're doing our best and that we're doing a good job. And, and in our heads, we need to know that, yeah, hey, I am doing a good job. And it, that it's not, at some point you have to realize and say, you know what, it, it's not me, it's you. Um, you have the problem, not me. You're you're the one that thinks that either it's a competitive thing, or you don't. They don't know the rule, but they're yelling anyway. Um, or the coach is really just kind of seeing what they can get away with, and it's not because of you, the person. It's just the state of the game. And so at some point you realize, okay, the coach can have a little bit of grace for a little while. And because they're trying, they're fighting for their team. They're trying to fight for some kind of edge or they're trying to motivate their kids to, uh, and the players to, to play better. Or they think that it's motivating to, for their players to see the coach yell at the official. Um, I never understood that, but okay. Um, so it's one of those things where you just have to understand that sometimes people are yelling but it's not because you're not doing a good job. It's just because they have a reason to yell. And, there, and I'm not advocating losing your hearing, um, but it does work to tune them out sometimes too. It's like, sometimes it's just noise. And they just, sometimes they just like to hear themselves talk. And you just have to realize that at some point, it just isn't, it isn't always that you're doing a bad job. It's just that for some reason in sports, people like to yell. And because you're wearing stripes or because you're wearing the officials uh, uniform, sometimes you're a target of that outlet for them. So. Great. Thank, thanks, Robin. Well, I see we've got just over five minutes left um, uh, until uh, we reach the top of the hour. And uh, I'm really um, pleased that uh, everybody's been so engaged here and our speakers have um, been answering uh, these questions to share with uh, their experiences. Uh, is there anything else out there that we haven't touched on uh, that you guys want to ask um, to uh, Robin or to Becca? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to um, Robin and Becca. Um, you guys have shared a lot this evening, and I really appreciate it. I know our athletes appreciate it. Uh, and uh, anything else that um, you can think of um, for advice for uh, our athletes? As uh, I, I I see that they uh, at least we piqued their interest in getting into officiating. <laughs> but any uh, any other uh, advice that you'd uh, you'd like to offer, offer our athletes? My, uh, my only advice is just put yourself out there, right? My, um, my competitive nature when I was a player and I thought I knew all the rules, I was at a point too where it's like, okay, well, you either have to put up or be quiet, right? So I put myself out there and it's like, yeah, I thought I could prove it. So I took it as another challenge because I was always 
again, competitive. I had always played sports. I had always, you know, been in that kind of, you know, uh, arena. And I didn't want to just walk away and not do that again. Um, and so I took it as a challenge. I'm like, well, they, I challenged myself. I wanted to play both sports in college and I challenged myself to do it. Um, sophomore year, they said, well, you should really pick one if you really want to be good at either. And I was like, no, I'll just challenge myself to be better. Um, and then same thing at the, at, after I, after I uh, graduated, I was like, you know what, if, if I think I can do better uh, than the officials that we had for this game, then I better put myself out there and do it. Um, so again, challenge yourself to, to, to take that step, um, but reach out for two people that either are in your area that do it. Maybe you have a favorite official that maybe did one of your matches or you've got Julie there. Um, so for sure, reach out to somebody to get make that connection because I got to tell you, the volleyball officiating community is a tight community. We we, we know who everybody is. Um, we love developing new and young officials, especially former players like yourselves. Uh, we love taking you under your, our wings and bringing you up because that's where we came from. Um, and so we wanna, we wanna give you every opportunity that you want and that you feel comfortable taking and, and giving you that as, lo as long as you want it. Um, it's gonna be there. And as long as you wanna keep officiating, we, we're happy to help you out. Great words of advice, Robin. Um, and uh, anything else here in our last um, minute or so? Julie, just real quick, can you talk about the, oppor the opportunities that you have had? Um, just, you know, briefly, you know, the volleyball has afforded you. You've been able to officiate games internationally. So not only have has officiating become a second career? You've been able to groom younger officials, but you've been able to travel abroad and, and have some of those opportunities. So if you could just speak to that, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I um, the adv advice that I would give people, um, I, I'm often asked, well, how did you get this opportunity? How did you get that opportunity? And I said, I just said, yes when it came along and I, and I said, you know, I had enough confidence, even though I might not have been ready or prepared for an opportunity that uh, came along, um, I said yes. And I had the opportunity back in 2004 to attend a uh, referee clinic for international referees. Normally you have to go out of the country and uh, we were uh, hosting one in the uh, US. And so I had a chance to uh, take the course in Atlanta and then um, later on that summer, I was off and running, uh, officiating internationally. I've been literally all over the world. Um, I started out um, officiating uh, for Norseka, which is basically in um, US, Canada, Central America. So my very first tournament um, over uh, out of the country was in Mexico and I went there a number of times, but I've also had the opportunity to go to Brazil twice. Um, I've officiated um, youth, I've officiated men, I've officiated women um, in the international venue. Um, I've had a chance to go to India, which um, I probably would have never done uh, without going there for volleyball. I've got to uh, uh, go to Europe, I've been to the Netherlands, I've been to Germany. Um, and uh, I did actually retire from international officiating um, in 2018. And I um, had my last tournament in uh, Canada. Uh, luckily it was in August, so it was still uh, warm weather. And I'm just very happy I got to finish my career um, uh, in, a, in a great tournament with uh, friends. And it, it, I just wanna echo a couple of things that Robin said. The officiating uh, community is very tight. I am very fortunate to have friends in volleyball um, all across the United States, but around the world too, from officiating uh, internationally. And the other piece of advice I'm gonna give uh, is with the earplugs. I spent well over half of my career without wearing hearing protection. I don't wear them as a second referee, but as a first referee, I do wear them, uh, not this season with the electronic whistle so much, uh, and there's no spectators, but I was shocked at the side benefits of 
uh, being able to focus more. I actually really uh, went that direction to protect my hearing, but you are able to focus more because you're just, you don't even have to try to tune stuff out. You just don't hear it. And uh, so all the, all the parents and the spectators out there, I, I don't, I don't hear them at all. I, of course, I don't hear a, a lot of things now, but that's probably better because I'm like Robin, I'm like, it's not about me. It's about you. So I'm going to call what I see and, um, officiate the game in that way. So thanks, Danielle. I, I just really um, enjoy um, sharing my experience with um, athletes. And uh, as, as Robin has said a number of times in this call, we want nothing better than to um, recruit new officials. Um, we've had wonderful experiences and um, it's not just about officiating. I wouldn't be in it if it was just um, for the officiating without the um, community, the friendships and the competitive um, nature that officiating is. We wanna be perfect. We, we strive every match out there to do the best job that we can. And it, it allows us to compete in a different way than um, when you're competing as an athlete, but it, it is a competitive business, but yet there's camaraderie like all of you have with your teammates. You're competing together as a team and as an individual and uh, officiating has a lot of that to bring as well. Thanks, I, Danielle. I still, I still do, I, it just, it, it blows my mind every time that I can get on a plane, they pay me to get on a plane, to fly somewhere in the country, to get off the plane, to go referee a volleyball match. So I get paid to do that. And that's just every time, it, it doesn't matter. I've been doing that, that piece for about 10 years now. And it just blows my mind every time that this is something I get to do. And, and when you're on that kind of a stage and you get to do have that type of experience, it, it is like Julie said, it's a different experience and it's a new challenge every single time. And I, I know she'll agree, neither one of us has refereed a perfect game, but that's always the goal, right? So we'll retire when it's, when it happens, so. But you guys are big time, right? Robin and Julie are working they're working with some of the power five leagues. So <laughs> they're, they're big time, big time officials. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. But uh, my heart's in D3, gotta say. It's where I came from. I love, I love the D3 is my, it's my home. So I, I, when I got that assignment for me for the D3 championship, that was my favorite. And I, I love it. That's all good. Robin, what year did you do that? Um, that was, oh, I got the board. Um, oh, that was in 2017. So they gave All us a little, not that little, long little ago. On my wall. Oh, I'll show you here. Here we go. I got my, my finals on the wall. It's a piece of the sport court. Um, yep. so, yep. So I got, I got that hiding over there in my office. So awesome. Pride and joy right there. So awesome. Awesome. Are there any questions from any of our student athletes? Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. We gave them a lot. Yeah, you guys did. You guys did. Well, again, I just want to thank you all. Um, we don't have any questions in our in our chat. I haven't seen any questions um, come up through our chat, but um, I just wanted to to thank you guys for taking the time out this evening, um, sharing all of your knowledge and your wisdom with us and with our student athletes. I encourage our student athletes to right now, while, while we have time, do some, do, some, do some own research and some investigation on your part. Visit some of those websites that Julie had. We're going to, uh, share this information. We have recorded this webinar, so it will be shared with your administration as well as your athletic directors. If there's teammates that weren't able to make it tonight because of class or, or, or the work obligations, uh, we'll make sure that you can pass this webinar along to them um, so that they can view it and just take some of this knowledge and this wisdom that you guys um, have heard tonight. So I just encourage you guys to stay curious. Um, and if I know if I can be of an assistance to any of you guys, please feel free to reach out to the conference office. We are here. Um, we exist because you exist. So that's what I like to tell student athletes. We are here to help you guys and be of service to you all. So 
If you have any questions about officiating, please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, I can put you in contact with Julie or Robin or Rebecca and use your coaches as resources too. Your coaches, trust me, they know the officials before you get off the bus. They know who's officiating the game or officiating the match that night. So they're um, a great source or a great resource for you all as well. So any last questions before we wrap up? Julie, I'll turn it over to you for any final words. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Danielle. Um, thank you all for your uh, attention tonight. Uh, I hope to see some of you um, contacting myself or Robin or Becca saying, you know what, I want to be a referee. Um, I happen to reside in the uh, southeast part of uh, Wisconsin. And if you're in the Milwaukee area um, or, you know, anywhere uh, in that area, feel free to reach out. I, I love to work with new officials. I love to um, mentor them and uh, provide, uh, you know, feedback, answer questions. So uh, I hope we've piqued some of your interest. And uh, as Danielle said, you know, take this time to go out to the website, you know, look at the USAV region where um, you are, um, Badger region, if you're in Wisconsin. Um, we need officials this year. I expect we're going to be playing probably without spectators. And, um, you know, check into it. It's a way to um, get started and make some part-time money. And, you um, you know, we're here to answer questions. So thanks so much. And uh, hope uh, to see some of you on the court here uh, in, in the near future. Thank you guys so very much. Continue to stay safe and best of luck, especially to our student athletes as we uh, hit the tail end of the semester here. Thank you Thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. That was fun. <laughs>